The year was 1066, on an autumn day in northern England. Three of Europe's most powerful warlords were about to come together in a conflict that would determine the fate of England. These three kings, ambitious and aggressive, had fought their way to the thrones of their respective countries. Harold Godwinson of England, William of Normandy, and Harold Hardrada of Norway were about to clash in a fight to the death for the greatest prize in medieval Europe, the throne of England. In September of 1066, Harold Hardrada sailed to Yorkshire with a fleet of 300 ships. On September 20th, he landed his army of 9,000 men and defeated the English earls Edwin and Morcar, who stood in the way of his path to York. Five days later, Harold Godwinson of England arrived with another army and met the Norwegian invaders in a surprise attack at Stamford Bridge. The carnage that ensued would make Stamford Bridge one of the most famous battles in medieval history. The Norwegian army was utterly defeated, and Harold Hardrada lie dead on the battlefield. The death of Norway's warrior king marked the end of the Viking Age, an age defined by Scandinavian dominance through culture, language, and force. The death of Harold Hardrada forms the climax of the most important source written about his life, King Harold's Saga. This biographical work was written in 13th century Iceland by a man called Snorri Sturluson. Snorri was a historian and poet whose family greatly influenced the political power in Iceland during his life. In addition to King Harald's saga, Snorri wrote about many of the Norwegian kings. Eventually, he compiled these writings in a famous work of literature known as Heimskringla, the Old Norse King Sagas. From prehistoric times to the 12th century AD, Heimskringla tells the story of every man that occupied the Norwegian throne. However, the story of King Harald Hardrada is unlike any of the others. At age 15, Harald fought at the Battle of Stiklestad on the side of his half-brother Olaf. With an army of 3,600 men, Olaf sought to reclaim the Norwegian throne after he had fled into exile due to previous threats of insurrection. Upon returning from exile, Olaf was greeted by an army of Norwegian farmers and noblemen who sought to block him from entering the country near a farm called Stiklestad. According to the writings of Snorri Sturluson, the great battle that ensued was fought beneath the shadows of a solar eclipse. While it is likely that Olaf led the smaller army, his men fought valiantly, but were inevitably overwhelmed. Olaf was among those to die in battle, and young Harald Hardrada managed to escape with his life. Harald is said to have been wounded in the battle, and rescued by the Earl of Orkney, who smuggled him to a remote farmhouse. There, he treated Harald's wounds, and the young warrior lived to fight another day. Soon after the Battle of Stiklestad, Harald set sail for Russia and joined the service of King Yaroslav the Wise. While in service, he was put in charge of a defense force and fought in a campaign against the Poles in 1031 AD. Harald fought in Russia for several years and took part in campaigns throughout Eastern Europe. After his time in Russia had ended, he took a great number of his men and set off for Constantinople. As he reached the great city, Harold presented himself to the Empress and joined her army as a mercenary. Harold's time in Byzantium is often considered the high point of his military career. As a warrior, he was a member of the elite Varangian Guard, a group of Scandinavians, mostly from Sweden, who served in the bodyguard of the Byzantine Emperor. As a member of this elite group, his first mission was to clear the Eastern Mediterranean of Arabic pirates. He was then sent to other neighboring regions, such as Asia Minor, 
to fight against the Arabic peoples there. Throughout these military campaigns, Harold demonstrated great leadership. Not long after joining the Byzantine army, the Varangians became very attached to him. Eventually, he was appointed as their commander and led them in numerous campaigns throughout the empire. This video is sponsored by VKNG. Inspired by Old Norse mythology and culture, VKNG provides handcrafted Nordic jewelry. If you would like to support the history of Vikings and demonstrate your passion for one of Europe's most distinguished cultures, head over to vkngjewelry.com and save 20% off your entire order for the next 15 days by using the promo code NOA20 or simply follow the link in the description of this video. After achieving a successful military career in Byzantium, Harold learned that his nephew Magnus had become king of both Norway and Denmark. Eager to visit his homeland under these new circumstances, Harold resigned his command in the Byzantine army. Upon hearing this news, the Empress became furious and accused him of stealing treasure one of the campaigns under Harold's command. Because of this charge, the new Emperor of Byzantium ordered his arrest. Fortunately for Harold, the Emperor was overthrown in a rebellion, and he managed to escape from prison. He then fled to Russia and collected decades worth of loot he had been sending to King Yaroslav for safekeeping. In addition to this, he married the Russian king's daughter, a sign of his elevated social status among the monarchs of Europe. With an unprecedented amount of wealth, Harold set sail for Norway and demanded that Magnus give up half of his treasury and land. The Norwegian king initially refused, but soon died and charitably named Harold as his successor. Harold ruled Norway for 19 years and earned the epithet Hardrada, which means hard ruler. There is no doubt that he ruled Norway with an iron fist and the same military ambition he demonstrated during his early life. When Harold was not suppressing revolts and waging conflicts, he oversaw the construction of churches throughout his kingdom. His wife, a Russian princess, was a member of the Orthodox Church and brought priests and missionaries with her to Norway. As Christianity reached the northernmost regions of Europe, the Viking Age was beginning to end. The pagan warlords of Scandinavia represented a fading aristocracy. Most Scandinavian noblemen adopted Christianity and gifted the new religion to their subjects in exchange for military service and loyalty. Throughout the 11th century, the face of Europe had changed dramatically. But one thing that hadn't changed was the bloodthirsty ambition of Norway's king. After ruling his homeland for several years, Harold began to shift his sights towards an even greater prize, the throne of England. English King Edward the Confessor had been in ill health and was on the verge of dying. He had no heir to the throne, but Harold had one that could be traced back over multiple generations. The English, however, were not interested in appointing a Viking as their ruler and crowned Harold Godwinson, King of England, in 1066 AD. With the support of Godwinson's disgraced brother Tostig, Harold of Norway amassed an army of 9,000 men and landed near Yorkshire at a town called Fulford. It was there that he defeated the English earls Edwin and Morcar, who stood in the way of his path to York. Five days after the Norwegian victory, Harold of England launched a surprise attack against the invaders at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. It was in this final battle that Harold Hardrada fought his last. His army destroyed, but his legacy remembered as the greatest warrior king of Norway.